Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are live. Finally, this is CSEC English again. At the beginning of a CSEC English A marathon. And it's it's going to be great. That's what I can say to begin. It's going to be awesome. We are live. We're live everywhere. We're live here on YouTube. We're live. Uh, if you're joining in from my Instagram, welcome. Thank you for being here. Or from any of my Facebook pages or LinkedIn, welcome. We're live everywhere, live and in living color. Right. We'll be here this morning. We're going to be here later on this evening. We're going to be here tomorrow, the next day. And basically, we have seven sessions to cover in the next couple of days. I'll show you guys a, a flyer very soon of the actual like chain of events that will be that will be happening. I am I'm pretty excited, pretty excited. Today marks the beginning. It's day one of the marathon, and we are looking at essay writing. As a matter of fact, we'll be doing a few days of essay writing because this is one um, one aspect of paper two that I've kind of glossed over in previous streams. I've done a, a hell of a lot of work on summary, you know, in my own, in a lot of different circles. I've done a lot on summary writing and um, I've done a lot on, on story writing. We've covered various forms of expository writing, but I think the essay writing doesn't get as much love as it should get, kind of because I think it's the easiest part of paper two. So I don't focus on it as much as I focus on, on everything else. So for this marathon, we're going to be focusing a bit on essay writing. And a bit later on, we'll touch on a few other things. All right. We have 47 of us on stream so far. Welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you for being here. Yeah. I appreciate you guys coming out in the early morning and uh, you know, making the, the sacrifice to, to be here and to make sure that you're taking this opportunity. You know, you're doing all you can to, to really master English, English, English A, CSEC English A. All right, let me show you guys what um Let me show you guys what the next couple of days are going to bring, right? Let me just share something with you guys. All right. This is what the next couple of days will bring to us. Yeah. The next couple of days. Let me go here. This is what we're working working with for the marathon. So I would advise you right away to just take a screenshot of this. If you do not already have the flyer downloaded somewhere, just take a screenshot so, so it, you don't miss anything. You know that, and then you're gonna say, "Oh, I didn't know I, I should have been there. I was I was free. I was just home sleeping. I I had no idea you were going live. This is your chance to know everything." Of course, subscribing to the channel does help you to know all that's happening, obviously. Um, but having this flyer handy is is going to be it's going to be good for those who want to follow follow through with the entire marathon, or at least as much of the content as you're able to to capture live, right? Um, let me just go through the days. So this is now, right? This is today, January second. It's now eight a.m. Jamaica time. I'm not being biased. I'm not saying Jamaica is the only country that exists, but I have to choose a time zone to base things around, right? So just do the conversion if you're um, watching or listening in from from a, from another territory. Just convert. You might have to just add or subtract an hour, whatever the case is. See, my my math is more difficult. They have to add a lot of hours, all right? So it's easier for you guys. So. Convert the time if needs be. For some of you, it's 9 a.m. For some, it's 8. I'm not sure if it's 7 for, for anyone, but it might be. So today we're looking at essay writing. We'll be going through basically the step-by-step -step guide. 
how do you approach writing an essay? Looking at section D of CSEC English A paper two, where we where we take on persuasive slash argumentative writing. We'll look at the difference in a little bit as well. Uh, not, not a huge difference between the two, but they're, they're a little bit different. So that's what we're doing for about three hours today. About three hours. Could be four, could be five. Let, let's see how it goes. Let's see how the flow goes. If I see person start to leave or get bored, I might just, you know, call it a day. But if you stick around, if you are excited, if you are engaging and using up the chat, then we might be here for a long time. It's kind of up to you. I'm going with, with your flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, later on, um, it's now night. Uh, wait a minute. It's it's no yeah, it's no morning for you. Right. So this evening at five um, from five to eight. A couple of my star students, my master students from my master student club. I have a very small group of students who I work with um, for a, a few sessions per week. A couple of them have agreed to um, come on stream with me and um, share some of their best works. So we'll be able to get a, a chance to look at these master essays written by students, written by students. Right. I didn't write any of them. It's not my writing. No teacher um, wrote these essays. Your peers, your fellow students wrote them. You're going to get a chance to look at them. We're going to pick them apart and identify what makes them great. Yeah. Then January 3rd in the morning, we'll do an essay brainstorm session where we look at lots of different past paper questions and think about different ideas and approaches we can take in, in um, answering those questions, right? Pretty much. Then in the evening, we'll, <laughs> that's my hair. Nice. In the evening, we'll look at essay reviews. This is where you guys who are listening in, watching in from across the Caribbean, you guys can actually have your essays reviewed by myself, by my master students. And I think a couple of teachers will actually join me as well. So if you want to see your essay be picked apart and reviewed and perhaps praised, um, you can participate by sending your best essay to this email address. So write it down or take a screenshot right now. You have five seconds. You have five seconds. The essays that I get the soonest will have the highest um, you know, chances of being reviewed on stream. Because clearly if I get 50 essays, there's no way I'll be able to um, we'll, we'll be able to review 50 essays. So first come, first serve, pretty much. Then January 4, we look at something that I have never looked at on stream. I've noticed that I do not have any report writing videos. So we'll we'll take a look at report writing. Yeah, report writing. We will look at some, yeah, we'll look at report writing. I won't get into it now. On uh, on January 4th, again, in the evening, we look at 100 study tips. That's a big number, isn't it? 100 study tips for English A. Uh, another teacher will join me, and you might get another 20 or 30. And I have another 100 study tips for English B. If we have time, we'll get into those. If not, we'll save that for, for another stream. And if my master students are able to join me, they might be able to share tips that they use, you know, they can share some strategies and techniques that allow them to study more, uh, more efficiently, more effectively. And then on Sunday, January 7th, this won't apply to everybody, but uh, a lot of private candidates need to worry about paper three, whereas almost everybody else, you know, almost everyone will be worried about SBA. If you're not doing the SBA, but you're instead doing paper three, you might want to come out to this early morning session early morning session and we'll just look look at paper three what to expect it's something it's something that has been heavily requested but i just have not looked at it so, so sorry guys sorry it's late but better late than never all right so your final chance to take a screenshot of this flyer 
this will be your guide through the marathon. Right. All right. Bam, bam, bam. That's that. So I have a little surprise for you guys. I, I told you that later on, I'll have um, some of my master students join me and we'll, we'll get a chance to look at their essays. But today, this morning, I have one student joining me, one of my, one of my top writers will be joining me on stream and slim the silver and i'll i'll bring him up on stream in just a moment and i will have him tell you a little bit about himself you know whatever he's willing to share and yeah maybe he will throw in a, a bit of you know some tips or advice i don't know what he has planned this is kind of off the cuff we we we, we we have not rehearsed anything at all. So he'll just, you know, give you guys a shout out and together we'll go through the stream, talk about essay writing. And by the way, I'm seeing that we have 79 viewers, but not, I don't think we have 79 comments. So just let me know where you guys are, are watching from. Where are you guys watching from? Um, let me see. Lionheart is always, as in always here. You know, one would think Lionheart is desperate to get a great one, but Lionheart has already gotten uh, gotten his great grades. It's, it's just a, a thing of support, right? So thank you for being here. Who else do we have? God Glory Carrier. Wow, that's an inspiring name. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, oh, these names are getting more and more interesting. I'm guessing that's six beats from TNT. All right, cool. And we have Anselm da Silva, who is on stream. You'll see him in a little bit. And yes, this is definitely exciting. That, that's one word I would use to describe what's happening today. Can't wait. Well, there's no need to wait. There's no need to wait. And yes, and Anselm is, is sir as well, I'm sure. Uh, that, that was just me. We have Paul Gay, well, Paul Gay, welcome, welcome, Millie Boo, Real, Alia West, a very, very familiar name, welcome, Michaela, yeah, thank you for being here, nice, 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 Rhonda is back, Roger, yeah, 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 Jerome Samuels, Joke Bed, Jada, Oh, yeah. First time joining the live. Welcome. Welcome. You're in for, for some greatness. You're in for some great tips, some great advice. And make sure you have those screenshot buttons ready because we're going to be using them quite a lot throughout this presentation. There are going to be some things you won't want to miss. And, of course, have your notebook handy and ready, but also be ready to take some screenshots because you can only write so much and, and so fast, right? Daphne Taylor, always here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Miss Compton, thank you for being here. And yeah, let's talk and write English. Definitely. Listening in from Jamaica. Pick up the cell. Yeah. Ooh. Montelin. Oh, my gosh. I will not attempt. But uh, we will get into um, counter arguments and when to use them. Yeah. HVG. Robin Hood, it's been a long time, hasn't it? It's been a while. Robin Hood is always, always on stream. Always on the streams. And there's no way I'll make it through all of these names just yet. But let's continue to participate and comment. Curiosity Kid, always here. Thank you. And let's have a good time, right? Let's have a good time. Now, let me open up the curtains and unveil and slim the silver. One of my top students. I'm really, really excited to have him on stream. So, Anslim, welcome, welcome to the yes, sir. Yeah, the yeah. Platform. Yeah. T yeah thanks us, for having uh, me. Yeah, of course, man. It, it's my pleasure. Of course, it's my pleasure, and it's gonna be the viewers' pleasure as well. I am sure. So, tell us a little bit about yourself, Anslim, and if if you want to throw any gems in there. Feel free. We're, we're, we're taking a relaxed approach. Uh, nothing is really scripted or planned. So go ahead. Give us something, Anselm. Yes. So good morning, everyone. My name is Anselm Da Silva. I'm coming from live from Guyana, South America, Caribbean. 
I see a um, couple of persons in the comments. Yeah, they're from Guyana too. Uh, it's a pleasure being here, you know. Always want to be on YouTube, like, yeah, yeah, seeing the Guyana there. <laughs> Always yeah. want to be on YouTube, get the chance to be here. And what we are here for is um, TSEC English. Pretty good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So let's get into, um, you know, the reason we are here. We would like to just chat with Anselin forever, but we're gonna we're gonna get into the the content. We're looking at essay writing, essay writing. While I bring up the little presentation I have here, I want you guys in the chat to rate rate your essay writing skills from from one to five. One being terrible, terrible. I just can't make it through an essay. It's not my thing. I have no idea what I'm doing. That's a one. Five means I got this. I'm I'm an excellent writer. I have all the persuasive techniques down, all the argumentative techniques down, smooth transitions. Rhonda, whoa, Rhonda, Rhonda, what a start. Rhonda, are you? <laughs> all right, let's see. Let's see. Jada with a five. Jada, I'm going to be looking forward to your comments. You, know, but you better back that up. You better support that five. That's a big number. Five sounds like my master student, so you better be able to, you know, support that. Kefim or Kefim Bando in the middle. That's a three. If you're a three out of five or a four out of five, then you might be looking at a grade two, but nobody wants a grade two. Nobody wants a grade two. Tristan, 3.5. Unidentified. Oh, that's a two. A two will not be a grade two, so we need to get that up. Michaela, 4.5, you're being modest. <laughs> 23, wow. Let's end the stream right here. 23 out of 5, that's a, that's a, wow. I mean, I'm, I'm not at 23, to be honest. I, I, 23 is a big number. Mio, oh, one, 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 one. All right, so looking, oh, accident, oh, three. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. It's a bit more realistic. Lionheart says three, Casey says two. So looking down, I am realizing that there are not enough fives, not, not enough even fours. So we have some work to do. Uh, yes, every content, we are. That, that's why we are here. That's why we are here. We're here to get a little bit better with each video, with each stream. All right. Bam, bam, bam. Let me find... Let me find what I need to find to show you guys because we're not here to joke around. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Let's bring this up here. And bam, here we are. All right. Uh, I think it's best if we start at the beginning. That's usually a good place to start. So let me go all the way up. Yes, this, this is like 100 pages, guys. We're getting through all of them. So if you're tired, I'm sorry. All right, CSEC English A, a guide to essay writing for students of CSEC English A. And when you say essay writing, it's argumentative and persuasive. We're going to be focusing a little bit more on the persuasive side because over the years, most questions have a more persuasive um, feeling to it, right? Whereas some, some questions might give you the chance to write a more argumentative style essay. But we're still going to look at some argumentative stuff because you never know what you're going to get, right? All right, so let's do it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a past paper question and kind of break down what we see, what we see in front of us. All right. This is a question that I've actually gone through in a live stream some time ago, last year or something like that. And it reads, uh, the question reads, every secondary school student should be required to do community service as a condition for graduation. Write an essay giving your views on the statement. So it says here, giving your views, which means if you want to 
take um, an argumentative rather than a persuasive approach, you may. So you, you don't have to stick to one particular side and just hammer that home, ignoring the other side. You can write a slightly more balanced essay when you get um, when you get a statement like this. However, always choose like a main side. Always choose a side that you're going to support at least 70%. Right? That's my advice. If, you, if your essay is too balanced, it might sound as if you don't actually have an opinion on, on the matter. All right, so let's look at a couple of um, things here. First of all, we see that the suggested time is 45 minutes. Anslim, how do you feel about 45 minutes? Is that enough time to write an essay? Maybe, maybe not, because <laughs> depends on the question. Sometimes you get points immediately as you see here. Immediately as you see the question, you get the points out of your head. Sometimes the four is harder to find than the against. Sometimes mm -hmm. you only get two points and you need an extra one to make that three. And sometimes, mm. you know, it's based on the writing. And then in the word limit, don't, don't really, um, according to Sora, don't focus too much on the word limit, but don't go over it too much mm. because, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Word limit was, um, right. Short, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. But get in there. Yeah. So 250 to 300 words. This is not a long essay they're asking us to write. We're looking at five modest paragraphs. You won't be able to write everything on the topic. It's it's just 300 word stops. And I I would say we could um, we could go a bit over because it says approximately, right? 250 to 300 words. So it could go a little bit over, but let's not go under 250. That's kind of dangerous. That's indicating that we're not able to write at length, and we don't want to give CSEC that impression. All right, so let's take a look at um, what the instructions look like. Um, let's see. Oh, interestingly, there's a blank space for any notes you may want to take, and we're going to be using that blank page. We're not leaving anything, right? You paid for the exam, you get to use all, all of the paper. Um, you're going to have some planning to do. So that blank space will be used. We'll get there. Clearly, you must write in standard English. I wonder why they thought they had to make that clear, right? This is English A, not Spanish A or French A or Patois A, right? English A, standard English. You may include a little bit of dialect within quotation marks if you're quoting someone and it's relevant. But of course, it's an essay in English. And you're going to be assessed on these three areas. How appropriate your content is. How clear your content is. How well you organize it. How well you develop your argument. And of course, the basic stuff like, you know, your grammar, sentence structure, paragraphing, spelling, all that stuff. These three elements will be used, these three criteria, to judge your essay. And they will determine how many marks you get out of 25, right? How many marks you get out of 25. So we can look a little bit more on what CSEC expects by looking at their mark scheme. Yeah, almost none of you on stream actually look at CSEC mark schemes. And I, I don't know why. Why would you not look at the document that tells you exactly how to get a grade one? Hmm? That's strange. It's very strange behavior. They're telling you here, do this to get a grade one. So we need to pay attention. Um, let's look at uh, expression, the expression skills. What must we be able to do here? Let's see. Must be able to um, show this skill. Correct use of structures of the language. So you must be writing in complete sentences. That should be a no-brainer. You shouldn't be writing sentence fragments. You shouldn't be writing phrases and leaving them to hang. Make sure your sentences are complete. The sentences must be clear and meaningful. 
So every single sentence must contribute meaning to the essay, right? Make sure you're not writing things that no one can figure out what you actually mean, right? You need appropriate transitions between sentences and between paragraphs. So let me just go ahead and highlight some key things here, right? Sentences must be complete. Yeah. Sentences must be clear and meaningful. You must have transitions between sentences and paragraphs. So when you're moving within a paragraph, how you connect the sentences should be clear. When you're moving from one paragraph to the next, we should see the relationship between those paragraphs with appropriate transitional words and phrases. Don't worry, we're going to get into all of these things. I'm just giving you the outline of what CSEC is expecting. Right? And then we have the basic stuff, for example, um, subject verb agreement. It's a very basic grammatical thing. Um, oh, yeah, this one is. This one um, trips students up when it comes down to story writing, but I haven't really seen where it's a big, big deal in essay writing. Usually the tense is fine, right? Accuracy of mechanics. We need to make sure that we are, we are using, you know, good punctuation, good spelling, good paragraphing, basic stuff, basic stuff, right? And let's look at what CSEC calls a superior writer. A superior writer demonstrates excellent management of argument and content, right? You know how to argue, you know what to argue. Excellent organization of argument. You know what point should come first, what point should come second. You know how to connect them, right? Error-free use of language. No misspellings, no incorrect use of, um, uh, of diction. No grammatical errors and silly things like that. That's what we call excellence here. Right? And that's what we want to attain. So by the end of this presentation, I want us to recognize that this is the standard we need to meet, and we're going to learn how to meet that standard. Right? Pretty much. All right. A anything so far, Anselm, before we... Before, before we move on, anything else? And you can interrupt at any time, yeah? At any time, any time. No, sir, so far you, you keep going. All right, good so far? All right, bam. Three steps. We're going to write our essay in three steps, three stages. If you skip a step, you are at risk of not writing a proper essay. First, naturally, we plan. How can you write without planning? You won't know what to write and you will be in there spending one hour writing an essay because you're just making up points as you go. You want to know exactly what points you're going to be writing about. So when you start writing, it's go, go, go. So you've got to plan. We're going to get into the different elements of planning because you've got to do three things while you're planning. You have to look at different points you can argue for both sides, for and against. When you look at both sides, you are able to choose which side is better for you, which side is easier to argue. And then you're going to choose three points and write your essay based on those three points. Usually, planning takes about 10 minutes. Yeah, about 10 minutes. After you plan, clearly you're going to start writing. This takes about 30 minutes. When you're writing, you're looking at the five paragraph structure. This is what I always recommend. You, have a, you start with your intro, then you have your three body paragraphs where you have those three points that you would have selected. Then you top it off nicely with your conclusion. After that, you go to the last step, which is reviewing your essay. Hopefully you have enough time left. This is section D, the end of the exam, which means this is where a lot of students are rushing. They're trying to make up for 
lost time. They might have spent too long on the story. So hopefully, you have enough time to actually get to review. When you're reviewing an essay, these are the things you're going to check for. Make sure that you have made a good stance, made a clear stance, meaning the reader knows exactly what your position on the matter is. They know what your opinion is. They know what your argument is. Make sure your points are clear. I should be able to read the essay and come away learning or, or understanding three things about the issue. Make sure they are clear and well explained. Right? Make sure you have evidence. You can't, people won't just believe you for no reason. Whatever point you bring to the table, support it with some kind of evidence. We'll get into it later. Right? Make sure your paragraphs flow logically. And of course, this is this is going to be helped out by using those transitional words and phrases. Right? Make sure you use a variety, not just one, not just rhetorical question all day long. Use a variety of persuasive techniques. Right? For, for the persuasive and even for the argumentative essay, throw in some um, persuasive techniques. Right? Make sure you do not contradict yourself. Make sure if you say um, social media is the best thing since sliced bread in paragraph one, by paragraph three, you're not telling us why social media is terrible. Make sure your essay is on is really telling us something that makes sense from beginning to end, especially if you're writing a persuasive essay and you're not looking at both sides of the issue. Right? In the argumentative essay where you try to be a bit more balanced, it can be a bit trickier, but there are ways to offer counter arguments and there are ways to look at both sides without contradicting yourself, right? And of course, the obvious, make sure there are no errors. That's our review. All right. So next we're going to look at the planning um, stage. Uh, Anselm, would you, would you add anything to this in terms of... Um, steps that you take when writing your essay? These are um, the steps that mostly I take, yeah. Yeah. Which, as we get which into more, um, yeah, as we go, go down more than adding, yeah. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the points and so on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which which step is the hardest for you most times? Most times the planning. Depends on the, um, planning. yeah, mm -hmm. depends on the state, the statement that they give you. Coming mm. up with points. Tough. Tough for me. Mm. All right. All right. For me, perhaps the review stage might be the trickiest because there's not much I can change when I'm, you know, yeah. 30, 40 minutes have passed. Like, what if I, I realize that one point is just complete madness? It's going to be really tough to do a lot of rewriting at this stage of the game. Right? And sometimes it's hard for us to recognize our own mistakes, like spelling errors and stuff. Somebody else might find them easily. But when you're looking at your own writing, it's like we're too used to our own writing to really see it clearly. Yeah, so sometimes the reviewing can be, can be tough. And I, I, I used to do, um, I used to do um, ed ed editing, not video editing, like you know, proofreading, ed editing text like work with authors and stuff. And I, I wrote a couple of books. And when I wrote my books, I had to hire an editor. <laughs> and it might sound ironic, like, what? You're editing people's works. But why, why do you need an editor? I couldn't see my own mistakes. You know, there were so many errors in, in, my, in my books. And I wrote them. I got too attached to the words on the page. So it, it was hard to be extremely objective. So we have to be able to see our own mistakes in order to review properly. And this is a trained skill, right? We have to be able to roast ourselves honestly so that we can identify when, when we go off track and learn how to, how to fix that. Yeah. And if, if there are any questions or comments or observations in the chat, we, 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 we'll address them. So don't be afraid to engage. We have some activities coming up, but even now, if if if, if some things you know seem unclear, or you want to add something to what I'm saying, 
And I know that there are some teachers here as well. You're welcome to, to give us some input. Rhonda says it's not common for people um, to see. It's not common. Yeah, it's not common for people to see to see their own mistakes. It it requires it it's it's a a skill that you have to really develop. Right. All right. So let's look at the planning. How do we plan? Um, the main part of planning is really thinking of four to five points for each side of the argument. So you're looking at like eight to ten points you're going to be brainstorming in the exam room. Right. Let me see what Western Wolf is saying. Look at your essay from a different um, person's perspective. I think that might help. Yeah, if you can somehow... I, I play chess a lot. In fact, I, I, I play chess... Every single day. There's no day that I, that I don't play chess. I usually play bullet chess, meaning the chess, you have one minute to complete a game. Because I don't usually have a lot of time all at once. So I play lots of rapid, rapid, rapid chess games. And one way in which I, I can better assess the board, and this is especially when I'm playing longer, longer form chess, ch chess, especially on a real board, which I do sometimes. One of the best ways to really analyze my, my position is to get up, walk around the table, and look at the board from my opponent's perspective. Look at it from where he's sitting. Or if I'm playing on the app, which I usually do, there's a little button. You press that, and it switches the board. So you're seeing what the opponent is seeing. And believe me, that actually helps you to see a lot of weaknesses in, in your structure because you're focused on how strong your pieces are, right? You're focused on how, okay, I'm planning this attack in three moves. I'm going to do that. I'm going to weaken that pawn. I have a checkmate in five. When the enemy has a checkmate in one and you miss it because you're not able to see from their perspective. So find ways to, you know, shift your perspective a little bit. If it means putting down an essay and looking at it next week to see the errors, just whatever I need to do. Or... Or, pro tip, get your friends, get your classmates to actually check your essays, right? Get your peers to look at your essays because they are going to catch errors that you will not catch. That's just how it is. Yeah. Queen's Gambit. <laughs> oh, Leonhard, thank you. <laughs> from, from, from high school days, you know. You, you know, we, we've been chessing since high school. Ah, uh, Western Wolf, you are a chessist as well. 10 minute chess. Oh man. In that time I would have played 10 chess games. Yeah. All right. So let's let's have a look at Adam thinking of four to five points for each argument. Um, for each side of the argument. For example, the use of social media is negatively affecting the lives of young people. Write an essay giving your views on the statement. So when you're planning, first, you need some material to work with. So you say, all right, let me do for, let me do against. And you write, you write up this in the planning box, the planning section, right? And now you're able to do a little bit of brainstorming within a few minutes. Jot down the points that come to mind. Here are some examples of points. Examples of points. Four, so points that would support the idea that social media is negatively affecting the lives of Young people, excessive social media use has been linked to mental, mental health issues, right? I think that's a fair point. So I could, I, could do a para, I could write a paragraph on that. Social media can be a platform for cyberbullying. And this would now connect back to the mental health. So, okay, that's another point that, you know, kind of connects. That's a good idea, right? Uh, social media creates unrealistic expectations about life and appearance, leading to dissatisfaction and low self-esteem. So, so unrealistic expectations, dissatisfaction, low self-esteem. That's another point I could use. Overuse of social media can lead to addictive behaviors, right? And this will distract us from the important things. It can be a major distraction from school, affecting academic performance and concentration. So when you practice brainstorming ideas, you will be able to come up with points 
like like five points in like two or three minutes. It just takes practice, right? Uh, could you add anything to this list, Anselm, or anyone else in the chat? What other um, ideas the, could yeah. we come up with? Not to the list, but um, a tip. Hmm. A tip, yeah, like, yeah. Um, yeah. A tip is to put yourself in like in the question. See, um, the question says the use of social media is negatively affecting the lives of young people. Put yourself in the life. Or put yourself as a young person, because you are a young person. Put yourself mm -hmm. in that perspective, thinking how social media negatively, negatively affects you. And you have your points. Mm. So That's make, how I make, would make, do. make it a personal thing. Like, like what if this yeah. is about me, right? How has social media affected me? Mm. If it has any effect at all. Mm. Or how, how, um, how, um, how has it affected persons around me, my peers, my friends? Right. Because yeah. it might not have affected you, yeah? yeah? But you still want to ground it in reality. So, okay, maybe it doesn't affect me, but it might affect persons I know. And you look at their lives, their situations, it might be able to come up with some points. Points that you wouldn't have come up with otherwise. Yeah, so that's a nice pro tip right there. And from the chat, we have a few more points. Can lead to a change in behavior. Yeah. And of course, we would want to look at the negative changes in behavior. Yeah. And Rhonda agrees with Anselm's um, tip there. Yeah. 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 So, brainstorming, these are some points I could use against. Right. So, basically, I am advocating for social media here. Social media can be a valuable tool, right, for staying connected with friends and family especially for those who are geographically separated. So in your brainstorm, you wouldn't need to write, write all this out so wonderfully. J jot down some notes because you would be expressing it well in the essay. Right? You might not have time to write, for example, this long sentence. But you could write something like, um, connects people. And that's a point. No problem. CSEC won't be marking your planning section, right? They are marking the essay itself. This is just for you. So if you're able to write a little bit more in the planning, and that might actually save your time in the essay, fine. Or if you want to do more bullet point stuff, fine. The point is you need to plan. You need to think about both sides before you choose a side and choose your points. right? So it might look a little bit different for different students. Another point against. Uh, it provides access to a wealth of information. So staying connected, you could just write, for example, staying connected as a point. Information as a point. Because you would know what you mean. You would know how to, ex how to expand and explore. Right? Helps young people develop digital literacy skills. Yeah? There are so many careers now being built off the existence of social media. Right, not just influencers, but social media managers, um, ad campaign managers, marketers, all of these careers now kind of revolve around social media. Right? Self-expression, right? It is an avenue for persons to express themselves. Career development and networking. So you could just write the, the little points in the circle here, or you could write out kind of the flesh out the idea a little bit more. And then, based on the points that you would have come up with for and against, you would choose the side that seems stronger. The side that has the better points. What if you're saying, oh man, these points are kind of trash. Uh, I don't think I can write a great essay on these points. Or maybe two points are good, but the rest are not so strong. But against might be, you may, maybe have some, some really good points then you choose against, right? If you're writing a more argumentative style essay, because it says giving your views, then you might choose two points for one against to balance it out a little bit, but make sure that you're not contradicting yourself. You can look at two sides without like going back on, on, on what you're saying. We'll get into it a little bit more. So make sure you're planning, make sure you're thinking about the points for and against, before you actually choose a side. Rhonda, you would go against. 
What about everybody else? Oh, that's that's a good point. Which side would you take on this, Anselm? So I'll go against because um against is really stronger than the four. While four has some strong points, they are like the the positives outweigh the negative in this mm. scenario. Mm. All right, all right. Let me see what everybody else is saying. Ooh, lots of wow. Are these young people? Oh, oh, against meaning you're advocating for social media. Okay, 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 okay. Right, 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 right. Nice. Yeah, YouTube is kind of a social media, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Against, against, against. You have more evidence for that. Against, against. Wow. Yeah. So it seems most uh, all of us so far, based on what I'm seeing, would go against. Mm. All right. Interesting. Very interesting. So let's try this one. Let's practice finding points, right? So let's look at this past paper question from May 2019. Bodybuilding competitions and beauty pageants are degrading to men and women. Write an essay giving your views on this statement. I'll give you guys five minutes. Five minutes. I want you to think about lots of points, as many points as you can for and against uh, for this prompt. What if you got this essay to write and you're in the planning stage? What could you jot down for and against? So after five minutes, I want you to flood the chat with your hand. In fact, if you're coming up with points right now, just drop them in the chat and I'll write them down here. Let me see the points you're able to find. I know Anselm has lots of points as well. Oh, yeah, that's a real fact right there. All right, let me see. Jada has a point four so far. It places value on, on one's body in instead of creative skills and abilities. All right, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So focuses on physical appearance versus skills and abilities all right that's a nice point uh let me see hey sandra welcome to the stream it creates a certain beauty standard for men and women alike we're looking at four right are we looking at four let me see if i can identify whether this is four or again it creates a certain beauty standard Robin Hood, is that for or against? I guess that is for. Creates beauty standard. Ah, oh, somebody, we we're talking about the, the health risks, use of steroids. All right, cool. Someone says Im improves confidence. So this would be over here. Unrealistic expectations. Four. They will have to compare themselves. So physical and mental health. 
So we have yes, sir, this one, this one is a very strong point because um, it could cause like insecurity to persons mm. who, um, who aren't in the competition or like they would think they need to reach to this standard. They would judge mm. themselves. It would lead to, as it comes back to this point, mental health affecting, yeah, being affected. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not seeing that many points against. Uh, okay, against. Oh, huh? so this is this is four. Yeah, is You're four. for the, the statement. So we've gone into drugs. Uh, let's see. Discourages self confidence. So this would also be four. I think we kind of have that somewhere already. So maybe the statement is uh, hinting at it, that it's degrading to the persons in the competition. So what I would say for against is that it mm -hmm. was their choice to be in the competition. Ah. So, yeah. so freedom of choice. Basically, no, nobody's forcing you to, to participate, right? Those who join want, want to join. As the contestant gets older, they will lose the body that they once had and will most result in them losing their job. But the same could be said for athletes, right? When you get to, to when you get older, you won't be able to run as fast or hit as hard. So you could mention this, but you'd have to support it with some take a take a, another angle, maybe. Uh, An exploit wait. for against. Hmm. Yeah, the same, the same that came in there. It creates mm. expectations. It creates, yeah, persons in these competitions are like sort of role models for people that are out of the competition, mm. inspiring so that's, that's, them to get. Ah, uh, okay, gotcha. So, so yeah. in a positive way. Yeah. All right. So inspiration. Yeah, when I look at like Miss, like Miss Universe and stuff like that, there's a lot. A lot of persons who look up to and even idolize in a positive way, you know, um, these persons. Yeah. Especially when they're, you know, like phil philanthropists and stuff, they're doing stuff for the community as well. Explain the statement. Well, the statement, bodybuilding competitions and beauty pageants are degrading to men and women. So this prompt is saying it really kind of objectifies, it puts them down. It's not a positive thing for men and women and yeah it's kind of suggesting that it's talking about the men and women who participate but that's not specifically stated so you could also talk about the men and women who you know watch these pageants as well uh, sense of community okay uh could cause death. Oh, yo, yo. So unhealthy. Yeah, that could be a health thing. And then it could make an extreme point bringing up death. Yeah. Uh, it will make. Ah, okay. So encourages self care. Hmm? All right. That, that could be a point for real. Yeah, yeah, pretty similar there. Low self-esteem. Income, yeah. Uh, I'm surprised this is just coming up. It's a job, isn't it? <laughs> you can make money. Strong yeah. point, strong point. Very strong point. I would definitely include the career, you know, the financial opportunities can cause unhealthy. All right, so we get the picture. And we, we've gotten a, a number of points in less than 10 minutes, right? Although it's kind of a group effort here. So in the exam, you will basically be doing this and then you will decide, okay, I like the four points more. I'm going to go four. I'm going to choose these three points, All right? But let's not stop here. You don't understand the four and against? Okay. So four means you are agreeing with this, with this statement. So four means agree. I, I agree. I think this statement is correct. 
So you agree that bodybuilding competitions and beauty pageants are degrading. You're saying, yeah, that's true. Against means you disagree with, with the state. It means you, you don't think it's degrading. You think it's wonderful. Yeah. So that's the for and against. Is that that clearer, Mio? Make sense? Hey, Shandell. Thank you for being here. Yeah. All right, cool. These are some points that, that I found beforehand. For four, these events often focus on physical appearance, which can lead to objectification of participants, meaning we're just viewing them as, as objects, pretty much. We're not looking at them as being actual people. They promote unrealistic and often unattainable beauty standards. Right. Someone found, someone found that point as well. Participation can lead to negative psychological impacts like body dysmorphia, low self-esteem, and eating disorders. Ah, yeah, that's a nice one. This might be my biggest focus, but I would touch on these for additional evidence. Yeah. And they, uh, these... Competitions usually reinforce traditional gender stereotypes, right? They try to put women in a box. You should look like this, sound like this, act like this. They put men, men in a certain box. And, you know, they try to define masculinity in a very rigid way, especially in terms of physique. And this could be seen as a negative point, right? And frequently, these competitions lack diversity in body types, which can be a bit exclusive, right? You, you look at a, 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 a you look at Miss Miss Universe. All of the ladies kind of have the same physique, right? Yeah, you're not seeing a very wide representation of different um, types, different body sizes, different different types of beauty and stuff like that. Same with, with uh, on the the men's side. So you could use that as a point, saying you know you're degrading men and women. And you are basically, you know, it connects to the unrealistic expectations and exclusion of certain types of beauty. Against self-expression, I think somebody mentioned this. You know, it's a way for us to express what you want to express, our desires and our dreams and our interests. And it's, it's really a celebration of work and discipline. Especially on the physique side, if you work out every day, put in the hard work, you want to celebrate that, that's a way to do it. Yeah. Boosting confidence, empowerment. Yeah. Career opportunities. That's one of the points that came in um, later on. Um, and we've been talking about health in a negative way, but of course, bodybuilding can promote health and fitness and also discipline. So it can be a positive thing on the health side as well. And valuable skills can be attained, like public speaking, networking, performance, of course, health-related stuff, all that jazz. Right? So based on the for and against, based on the points we were able to come up with, which side do you think you would choose? Which side would you choose? So uh, against is very strong, you know. Both sides strong, but to me, for me, mm. it's against. Against. Mm. Man, I would definitely go for four here. <laughs> yeah, that's just me. Uh, against four, against four, this statement. And since you're just giving your views, you could take a more balanced approach where you look at a couple of positives, but you also look at some downsides, right? So that's also a possibility. Some statements, will, some questions will force you to pick a side and run with it. 
while some questions allow you to either pick a side or be a bit more balanced, such as such as this one. So what I might do is I might do four and talk about like a couple negatives, but also acknowledge the the income part. Right? I might acknowledge um where's the income thing? I might acknowledge this part in the essay. Um, for evidence, would you have to state realistic evidence? Your evidence should sound realistic. Of course, you do not have access to Google in the exam, so you won't be able to actually pull up real stats, you know, real data, real quotations, because you don't know beforehand what the exam topic, uh, what, the, what the essay topic will be. But you're going to invent evidence, but make sure the evidence sounds realistic, right? Make sure it sounds like it could have been written in a, in a real article. Someone might have said this. This quote sounds real. Statistics sound realistic, right? Uh, yeah, CXC wouldn't expect you to be able to actually reel, in, reel out actual quote, quotes from real people and give real data. That would be too much to ask for anybody. All right. Just when you think we're done, we're just getting started. All students must study at least one foreign language until the end of their secondary school education. All right, Tanessa, giving your views on this statement. Yeah, we have a couple. We have a couple to go. So... All students must study at least one foreign language. What do you guys think? What are some points you could come up with? All right. Improves critical thinking. Okay. Critical thinking. That's actually true. It's actually true. Uh, hey, Nadine. Good to see you here. Makes you more marketable. Ooh, yes, that's true. When you leave school and you have a, a, at least one foreign language under your belt, that makes it much more marketable. Again, students will have less time to study. Yeah, so basically a time factor for students. Right. Four, studying overseas could be much easier. Okay, nice. So overseas opportunities for both working and studying. Nice. Could be needed for occup occup for future occupation. So basically job opportunities could come up. Nice. These are some good points. Yeah. Job opportunities, financial opportunities, career in translation. This could be like an example, you know, when you're looking at that point. Uh, make you more advanced. In what way, Brenna? More, more advanced home. Yeah, work, car, le car, um, leverage for a career. Not all students want to learn a foreign language. So interest. Not all students have the interest, right? For could help in your study. What do you mean help in your study? Could improve communication skills. Okay. We need some more points against. So one I have for again, so maybe in the new age of technology, learn a new language isn't actually necessary. With Google Translate, there are many other apps that you can actually use to understand another language. So maybe you don't need to learn another language. Nice. Nice. That's a really good point. I did not really think of that. So we have stuff like Google Translate. This would be a nice example 
um to support that point. Yeah. Oh no 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 no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh wow, I think I just made a mistake. DJ, I'm sorry, I just, I, I blocked you, I blocked your comments by mistake or whatever. <laughs> I try to unblock in a moment. Uh, oh no no no, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. I'll see if I can unblock it even while I'm while I'm on stream. Um, the travel opportunities. All right, so we're we're seeing a number here. And you could use that time to do other things. Nice, nice, nice. All right, cool. Pretty good points. And these are some points that I that I found. Right? It fosters cultural understanding and appreciation, promoting global awareness and tolerance. Yeah. Uh, significant advantages in in the global market communication skills interconnected world globalized economy diversity to the curriculum right against mandatory language study may not align with every student's interest or academic strengths i hated the fact that i had to take spanish i hated that it was mandatory and my average dropped every semester I had to take it, every term I had to take it. Uh, mandating a foreign language could be seen as imposing certain cultures over others, if you want to go that far. And it might not be practical for their future careers if they have no interest in doing any career, in, in engaging in any career related to learning a second language. Undue stress, and it could impact overall academic performance. And students might benefit from focusing on other areas like technology, vocational skills, or arts. Yeah. Studying a foreign language may cause interference for studying official. Ah, okay. That's an interesting point. Yeah, yeah. Could make the language you need to learn a bit harder to learn because you're focused on other languages that might not even be important to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The student might not have that interest or intelligence. Yeah, right, right, right. So these are some good points. So we're practicing this skill of finding points, right? Right. Let's do one more, one more. A very, very relevant one. No primary school child should be given his or her personal computer. Give him or her educational books instead. Write an essay, either supporting or opposing. So in this case, you cannot write a balanced essay. You have to write an essay either going for or going against you know, completely. So what do we think? What do we think here? Books can be outdated, heavy, and fragile. Nice. Distractions, that's four. All right. They're mature enough to use computers without adult supervision. All right. Just a lot of negative things. Right. Financially in if all right, these are some really good points. Yeah. Let me just jump down and show you guys the points that I that I have here. Four. 
Books are fundamental in developing reading and comprehension skills, which are essential for academic success, right? The limiting access to computers helps reduce screen time, which is beneficial for physical health, right? Right, that makes sense, doesn't it? Books often require and enhance longer attention spans. This is an important one in the TikTok era where nobody can sit down and look at something for more than one minute, right? Books are generally more cost effective than computers, right? Computers offer many distractions. Yeah, against uh, familiarity with computers can foster digital literacy. That's a must have point, isn't it? Interactive and engaging educational content. You can gamify learning, you have quizzes, you have more, more interactivity. Computers offer, offer um, access to a vast amount of information. There's no way a book can house as much information as a computer. A whole library wouldn't be able to do that. Right? Computers can offer personalized learning experiences where, where each student can have um, certain parameters set in accordance with you know, their learning needs and goals. Yeah. And yeah, technological technology can offer specialized tools to support children with learning needs, including those with disabilities. So these are just a, a, a couple of points for and against. And I'm still seeing some really good ones in the chat here. Uh, primary school students tend to be attracted to education on a laptop than in a book. Yeah, so it helps them to not get bored, limits outside activities. But whether books or computers, uh, those are both kind of indoors, I, I, I think. The distractions, yeah. Yeah, students, uh, wider range. Yeah, you can get a wider range of information, different ways to show and interact with information. All right, pretty good. Based on all of these points, would you go for or against? For or against? Against again, because against is stronger. In my opinion, stronger. Mm. What, what points do you think you would um you would use digital literacy can be def definitely number one mm. Mm. What, what else do you think Any, any other points here that that would definitely make it into your your essay? The one with the uh, vast amounts of information, yeah. Mm. Because you can have um, all those books, and so in, instead of buying all these physical books, you can have all these books on the computer. So you mm -hmm. still have books, and you have the computer. So all these information on one computer there. Yeah. That makes sense. And look, looking at the chat, what are some of the some of the um, more interesting points you're seeing in the chat, Anselm, that you might just want to highlight for a bit? Both for and the against. Light from the computer. I'm seeing one here. The light from the computer is. Yeah, the light from the computer can be harmful to the eyes. They are blue light. Maybe staring mm -hmm. at the screen for like. Hours and hours, damaged eyes. Yeah, yeah, that could definitely be an issue. Any other in interesting ones going in the chat?
Yes, I'm seeing one with um, primary school students tend to be more attracted to education on a laptop than a book. Because they are computers mm. more interactive. Yeah. Animations, these things going on on the screen. A book is just a yeah. page. You just can they get bored. Attention span. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's it. Yeah, yeah. All that's right. It. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Those are some pretty good points. And I, I'm just um checking the points here in the chat. We have some we have some pretty nice uh, pretty nice points here. Pretty nice points. Uh, we had the blue filter thing, early exposure. All right, cool. So thank you for participating in that that little exercise there, right? Uh, after you brainstorm and you look at points for and against, you're going to choose the side that has the stronger points or the points that you are most confident writing about, right? It's not about what you actually believe. It's about which side is easier to argue. So even if you disagree in real life, if agreeing is just easier to argue, then agree. Nice. So you, you do the brainstorm, then you pick a side, and you pick um, three points. No, argumentative versus persuasive. Sometimes the prompt says, give your views. Sometimes it says, agree or disagree. So if it says, agree or disagree, it's more on the persuasive side, right? Agree or disagree. If it says, give your views, give your views then you can make it either persuasive or argumentative. Argumentative is really just um, looking at the points that are out there a bit more objectively, not really trying to persuade someone to join your way of thinking, but you're just giving us the points as, as they are. So you could be a bit more balanced where you're not really trying to convince or persuade someone. But you still have to make strong arguments, of course. But the aim is more to give a slightly more balanced, more objective approach. So the tone would be a little bit um, a little bit less persuasive, but still somewhat persuasive and a little bit more argumentative, you know, kind of defending maybe a duality in a situation like we could look at it this way or this way that's a pro but that's a con right so i always like to write a, a, a more persuasive style essay kind of hammering home you know one particular point but the argumentative essay can be written when you get that kind of prompt you know just give your views on this you know, basically tell us tell us what you think about a particular thing Someone mentioned something about counterpoints, right? So the counterpoint would be you're arguing for, but you add one point that's against. That's a pretty common tactic in the argumentative because you want to look at both sides a little bit. But even in persuasive, you can introduce a counterpoint, but you don't want to focus too much on the counterpoint because it's not in line with your thesis statement. So you can bring up a counterpoint, and I would suggest when you bring up the counterpoint, you counter the counterpoint, right? So some would argue that blah, 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 kind of admitting that, okay, I get what they're saying over on that side, but blah, blah, blah. So even when you bring up a counterpoint, you, you don't want it to sound like you're just contradicting what you said earlier on in your intro or in a thesis statement, especially, especially if it's a more persuasive. Essay, right? Uh, Jada says, for argumentative, could you say that technology can be good for children? But with, yeah, so so you want to kind of make it a little bit more balanced, explain like in what situation would it be good? It would be good here, but in this situation, it, it could pose a challenge. So just a bit more balanced, but still pick a side. Even when you make it a, little, a bit more balanced, still have a side that you're working with. Yeah, that's my advice. 
All right, make sure that the three points you select are clear and specific. Specific meaning you don't want the point to be too broad or general. You want, want it to be a point that it's specific enough that you can give us evidence for that point. All right, clear and specific. Logical, the point must make sense. It can't just be, um, uh, you know, social media negatively affects people because um, if we use social media, we will go to hell. I mean, maybe you believe that, but it's not necessarily a logical point that you can support with argumentation and evidence, right? So make sure you have some logic behind your points and make sure you're able to connect the points. Because all of these points are working toward the same goal, right? So make sure the points can be related. For example, um, uh, okay, this one about degrading. The unrealistic expectations here, this would be able to connect with um with, with this point easily one point leads to the next and uh, the objectification is very much related to um stereotypes we have the psychological impacts so make sure that you choose three points that connect right look look over here self expression can also help you to boost confidence and 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 that, that can empower you um and of course boosting confidence and being healthy kind of go hand in hand so you, you want to be able to link the points well so it doesn't sound like it's just three random points being thrown at the marker right now what if they come up with a statement and you don't know well, they will not give you a statement that you don't know anything about. All of the past paper statements are somewhat familiar in, in that they are kind of realistic arguments that we would have. They're not like something super scientific that only a few students would know about or something about literature or philosophy. There are going to be um, topics that everybody can talk about. So you won't need to worry about finding a, um, getting a topic that, you, oh my gosh, I, I don't know this word. I've never heard about photosynthesis. How can I write something about that? I, I, I didn't do biology. It's not going to be like that. It's it's kind of more general knowledge stuff. Right? Uh, for argumentative, is it the same as choosing points from a negative, from a positive or a negative perspective? Well, the, the difference is, the persuasive, you're trying to convince me that you are right. This is what I believe. And by the end of this essay, you should believe it too. The argumentative is a bit more balanced where it kind of shows like a give and take. Or I agree 80%. But this 20% is kind of shaky. And if we make that clear, the essay. Right? So the argumentative is a little bit more balanced. While the persuasive, you, you go all in on one side. Yeah. The persuasive is just easier to write, though, so just stick with that, is my advice. Right. Yeah. So that's it. That's the brainstorming. Um, th th those are my tips for brainstorming. You choose, you, you, you think about points for and against. You choose a side. You choose three points that are clear, logical, and connected. And you can do all of that in about... 10 minutes, right? You can do all of that in about 10 minutes. Any any questions on the planning or any any additional um, additional advice, Anselm, or questions from the from the chat about you know how we plan, but how we, how we plan the essay. What are what are we thinking? Yeah. Do, do you incorporate any anything else in your planning that I haven't touched on? Or do you skip any of these steps sometimes? I mean, whatever works for you, you know. It's not 
Most this times I just name. follow the same plan here, you know. Same mm. plan, go along. Okay. So it, it, it sounds pretty much in line with, with how you write. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. That's cool. Uh, uh, let me see if... I'm, I'm giving those in the chat a little bit of time to ask questions if they want to do that. Two minutes for the questions. Ah, uh, finally, I think I I managed to to unblock that. Uh, unblock that person I blocked accidentally. Dijane, I'm so sorry. Dijane, can you leave a comment? Please clear my conscience. Leave a comment. Let me see that you're still here. And you're still able to comment. Man. Oh, they make it really easy to block. And really hard to unblock. All right. Hopefully that comment comes in soon. So I don't have to feel like a villain tonight. Blocking students who are just trying to participate here. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> All right, bam. So let's go to the writing. That's how we plan the essay. That's how we brainstorm, think, choose what side to work with. Um, oh, th there are two questions. Let me take these questions. Uh, okay, we, uh, we already tackled that one. We tackled that one. Uh, sometimes I skip the planning and go straight to writing and think about my points in the thesis. Okay, um, that can be a little risky. That can be a little risky. Yeah, can be a little risky. Oh, Dijani, thank God you're here. Oh, sorry, I, I blocked it by mistake. How do you not sidetrack? By planning, Mio. By planning. That's that's really the only way. Because if you plan and you say, okay, I'm looking at these three points, there's no way you're going to start writing on something totally different. If you start writing without planning, then you might forget like what you're supposed to be writing about and you end up being all over the place answering a different question. That's what you want to avoid. Yeah. All right, so writing takes us about 30 minutes. If more questions come in, I'll, I'll look at them. This is the what should you do in the con? Okay, I, I'm going to get to conclusion, right? I'm going to get to the conclusion. Don't worry. All right, Anselm, do you want to um, take us through what? Each of these should should kind of look like, you know, in your experience. We'll go in detail, but just looking at the screen, what do you have in mind here? Yeah, so um, the hook, the hook is the um one of the strongest part of this essay because it captures the reader's attention. If you are strong um in captivating the reader's attention, they will um. You'll know this is something very exciting. They'll be tempted or they will want to stay and they will want to read. They will want to see what you have in this uh, essay. For the uh, stance, the stance is basically saying, well, okay, I support this or I disagree with it. Now the points, you state the points that are coming up in the paragraphs. Starting mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the body paragraphs, you separate each point, develop them. I would uh, suggest start with the strongest point first, but also uh, think about structure. Ensure that each point run each point runs into each other. 
and that it sounds good in your mind before you actually start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's some good stuff. So you, you mentioned choosing the starting out at the strongest point, right? And I actually advise that as well. Um, and one of the reasons, it's it's kind of an, an unfortunate reason, but one of the reasons is when you start with the stronger points, if time runs out, at least your best work is on the page, <laughs> right? All right, cool, 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 cool. So let's, let's go into uh, um, more details here. Let's look at the intro, right? There's no better place to start than with the intro. Three parts, the hook, the stance, and optionally, the three points. And Slim, if you're still here, still here, good. How do you usually, how would you define a hook? And how do, what kind of hooks do you like to use in your essays? Because you have written some pretty good essays that I've seen. Well, uh, the hook is to catch the person's attention, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would I I like to use sometimes I use two two types so there are mm -hmm. three types I think uh, there's a profound statement rhetorical question and I believe there is a, a quote from someone like like a famous person or from a book or so on it doesn't have to be real but mm -hmm. something to captivate the person. That is reading. When I uh, write in this hook, I tend to um, make it about the subject or the statement. Mm. If we are talking about driving, I make the hook something close to driving or driving related terms. If it's about school, try and make it about school. Just try and make it directly related to the topic and it's easier. Mm -hmm. yeah of course that's a must it would be crazy if you just wrote if you just wrote a random hook that has nothing to do with the topic at hand right so we have to so you mentioned two things one make sure your hook is powerful enough to spark interest in in the reader you know grab the attention and two while you're grabbing the attention make sure you're grabbing their attention to the right thing you're not just writing a random hook so you can't go into the exam and say okay this quote is gonna be my hook for section d i have my hook ready no it has to be based on the question right so you can have a type of hook that you prefer to use for example some persons like to use a rhetorical question some persons like to use a quotation so you can say okay i want to use this type of hook that's fine but you can't prepare the hook in your mind because you don't know what the question is going to be all right cool so let's look at the hook, which is the first part of your, of your essay. The hook is your opening sentence or sentences for those who like a slightly longer hook. Its purpose is to spark interest in the topic. It must be interesting enough to make someone pay attention. Of course, your marker must pay attention and read the essay. They have to mark your essay. They don't, they, they, they don't get to just, ah, this is boring, I'll skip it. But pretend as if your marker doesn't have to read your essay and you're trying to get someone interested, excited about the topic. You need to make, you need to create a good hook. Now, here are some examples of types of hooks. And Slim actually mentioned all three of these. And these aren't all the kinds of hooks. They're just three really good examples to keep in mind. A relevant quotation. Quote something that somebody said. Of course, it's not really a real quote most times. You make up a name, make up a quote. Or if you can find a real-life quote that fits, ooh, all the better, right? You could use a rhetorical question. This, this seems to be the most common type of hook based on the many, many, many student essays I've read. Profound statement. You just make a statement that is very impactful that relates to um, the topic at hand. Now, we'll look at some examples. So, looking at this past paper question, which I actually 
wrote an essay on this on stream so you can check that out afterwards to see that full process some of you might have seen that already those who are you know regulars on the channel um every secondary school student should be required to do community service as a condition for graduation write an essay giving your views on this statement so here are three relevant quotations that could connect to this question right so every secondary school student, every high school student should be forced to do community service if they want to graduate. Here are some relevant hooks. And these hooks would be in support of the statement. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. These are the words of the renowned revolutionary Mahatma Gandhi. Wow, look at that hook. And it doesn't have the word community service in it, the phrase, but it's definitely hinting at, you know, serving others is a good thing. It's a quote that has that idea built into it. Here's another one. Serving one's community is the ultimate purpose of education. Posits Brian Smith, a preeminent educator and academic writer. This guy does not exist. This quote is not real. But in the exam, you'll be able to make up things. Just make sure they sound good. Okay? Muhammad Ali once said, serving others is the rent you pay for your room here on earth. That's a real quote. So these are some quotes that could um, be used to, uh, to, to really spark interest in this essay. Yeah? Oh, Anselm, this is your hook here? Yes, sir, that is one from, um, that I did when we had this little session, remember? Ah, uh, yeah. This, yeah. Was, this, was, yeah, this was a simple one. Yeah, yeah. Re read it for us. Huh? Service to one's community is a, no is a noble act that can be of significant impact to them along with their community. For this reason, I am in full support of, I am in full support for all secondary school students to be involved in community service as an obligation for graduation making the most of community service would bring forth benefits to the community help students to make new and stronger connections and they would also gain skills this was a very yeah. simple 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 one i didn't go too simple but effective it. yeah 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 so you have the hook and you actually have the, yeah, you have the whole, that's like the whole intro, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the whole, yeah, the whole intro right there with all of the parts. Yeah. So the hook doesn't, it, it can be simple but effective, you know, it just needed to be a, um, just a, a strong way to start, start your essay, right? Here are some rhetorical questions that could work. What is the point of education? Is it just about passing a test? Or is it more so about making a positive impact on the world, right? You ask a question that kind of has an obvious answer that your reader can reflect on. Look at this one. Do students who have never served their community in any way really deserve to graduate high school? That's kind of a strong question. And it indicates where I'm going with my essay, right? And look at this. In a recent poll, 85% of education policymakers agreed that community service should be a graduation requirement. Who would disagree with that many experts? So you make them feel kind of stupid to disagree, right? Like, oh, how ridiculous would you be to disagree? So you can use a rhetorical question to start the essay with a bang. You can use a profound statement as well. An education that excludes community service is incomplete. Yeah. School should foster the holistic development of students such that they will be equipped to thrive in and contribute to today's world. Or in the 21st century classroom, community service should be given as much priority as tests and assignments. So these are yeah, nine examples now of you know, hooks. 10 examples, Anselm gave you his hook as well, right? So the three main types of hooks that I encourage you to keep in mind, 
a relevant quote, a rhetorical question, a profound statement. Keep those in mind. Nice ways to start your essay. All right, so I chose to, to work with this particular book when I wrote this essay. Yeah. So that's it. That's the hook. We've learned what a hook is. It is the statement that is meant to give your essay a strong start and spark interest in what you're talking about. Without a good hook, no one cares about your opinion. Right? And, and hooks aren't limited to essays, actually. Hooks are used on social media, on YouTube. When, when you watch or when you click on a video, if the first couple seconds are boring, you just click off and find something else to watch. Like, why stick around if you're already bored? So YouTubers have to make sure that their hook, their, their first few seconds are flawless. With my kind of content, it's, it's a little different. I try to be clear rather than, rather than exciting. But in most niches, the first couple of seconds, they hit it with the hyper editing and, you know, the Mr. B style, you know, in your face kind of stuff that, that gets you drawn in, gets you hooked, gets you hooked. Think of an essay in that way. You've got to pull them in in the first couple of seconds. Uh, sorry for the rhetorical question. Am I supposed to answer the question in the essay? Well, the whole essay will kind of answer that question. And it's a question that should be, it's really meant to have your reader reflect on something. So you, you don't have to answer the question like in a literal way, like the answer is yes, but your whole essay will indicate that, okay, clearly this is the answer to the question. For example, um, what is the point of education? Is it just about passing a test? My essay will clearly answer that. No, it's not. It's about making a positive impact. For example, through community service. So you answer it in the points in the argumentation that you make, right? No, what about the stance? Anslim, tell us about the stance in the essay, please. Yeah, so the, the, uh, the stance is bit, yeah, thesis mm. stance is uh, you stating which side you're on, whether for, against, agree, disagree, yeah. Yeah, but this this is one thing that uh, you must make clear. You can't just say, "Well, put your hook," and you just skip over the stance, mm -hmm. or you put something, but you're not making yourself clear <clears throat> as to uh, what side you're on. You must make it clear to the reader that, well, yes, I am in support, or no, I disagree. Yeah, yeah. So don't leave the reader guessing. Don't don't let that don't don't. Create an essay where after I read the intro, I'm wondering, hmm, does he disagree? Does she disagree? No. I should know exactly where you stand. Your thesis is going to be that complete sentence that makes it clear. So after your hook, even if you think your hook makes it obvious, still write your thesis there. Don't depend on the hook to, to have the reader assume what you believe. Still make it clear. Um. So basically, do not find a hook that is not. Yeah, you need the hook. The hook has to be related to everything. Is it okay to use personal pronouns? I would stay away from I as much as possible. If the question indicates that they want, um, I haven't really seen a question where I would have to use I to be honest. Stay away from I. That's kind of where I stand on that. Stay away from I. A few questions are, 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 are written in such a way where they kind of indicate that they want that more personal touch. But in general, third person is just more professional. So the reader believes. Uh, well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't Good, even have yeah. to, you would not, you wouldn't have to refer to yourself, you know, at all. You would just state the belief. You wouldn't have to say, I believe, or one believes, or he who writes this essay believes. You don't have to refer to yourself at all. Just refer to what you think. You're going to see what I mean in some samples. 
right? So, for example, uh, just look at look at this hook. Students should foster the holistic development. I didn't I didn't say I believe that students should foster, right? I just tell you what I believe. I don't have to include myself in the sentence at all. And they're gonna see my thesis um, statement in a while, or my stance. This is the stance I chose to work with. Therefore, it is only logical to propose that every secondary school student should be required to engage in community service in order to graduate. It's a very clear sentence telling you what I believe and what my essay will go on to support. Everything else that comes after this will support this, this idea. And I didn't use I or the writer. I just state what I want to state, right? So the hook bleeds down into the stance. And guess what? You, need, you can't just write a hook, full stop, write a stance without any linking. You have to make sure that there's a nice transition between the hook and the stance. So this is my hook from, from the highlighted part here. It's my hook. But look at how I use this little red, red highlighted part here to blend the hook with the stance. Let me read it all together. School should foster the holistic development of students such that they will be equipped to thrive in and contribute to today's world. Therefore, it is only logical to propose that blah, 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 my hook, my, my stance. So imagine if I just ended here and then I, I didn't put this nice transition and I just said every secondary school student. The point would be brought across, but it wouldn't be very smooth. It wouldn't be very smooth. Right. So the hook, the stance, which makes it clear what side you're on, what the essay is about. And it's not a must, but you may want to just indicate the three points that you will discuss in the body of the essay in your intro. I think if your intro is already too long after the hook and the stance, you can just you, you, do, you can leave that out and then just deal with it in the body. But you can include the three points to be discussed in the introduction itself. Right? Of course, do not explain anything. Don't start explaining the points. Just tell, tell us what points you will discuss later on. Right? That, that's really it. That's really it. So this is what um, the three parts would, would look like now. I'm gonna go from hook to the three points. School should foster the holistic development of students. Oh man, I'm tired of reading. And Slim, would you do some reading for me, please? <laughs> Just give us hook stance and the three points. Yes, sir. School should foster the holistic development of students such that such that they would be they will be equipped to thrive and contribute to today's world. The stance, therefore, it is only logical to propose that every secondary school student should be required to engage in community service in order to graduate. The three points. This would yield a slew of important benefits to the students, three of which will be discussed in this essay, namely, the development of various critical skills, opportunities for career and academic pro prospects, and a means to give back to the community. Ah, thank you. So we have, uh, that should be that. So we have the three points after our stance and our intro is complete. We hook them, tell them what we're talking about. We tell them what to expect in the three points. That's your intro. That is how to write an introduction on section D of CSEC English A, paper two. You write a hook, write a stance, and if you are able to write more words in the intro, depending on how long the intro is so far, you just highlight the three points. You're not gonna bullet point the three points. You're gonna smoothly introduce them, like I did. This would yield a slew of important benefits three of which will be discussed in this essay. That's how I introduce um, the, the point list. Then I get into the points, right? So that's it. My intro is done. 
can pack up and go home. Intro done. But that's just the intro, right? We need to write the entire essay. So let's look at the intro as a whole. This is what it actually looks like on paper. This is um, what it looked like, you know, when I wrote it on stream. Students should foster the holistic development of students. So uh, this is our hook, right? That's our hook. And then I, I get into my stance. Therefore, it is only logical to propose that every secondary stu um, school student should be required to engage in community service in order to graduate. That's what I believe. That's my stance or thesis statement. Then I list the three points. This would yield a slew of important benefits to students, three of which will be discussed in this essay, namely the development of various, oh no, that's a pen, the development of various critical skills and opportunities for a career, and, uh, the development of various critical skills, opportunities for a career and academic prospects, and the means to give back to the community. So point one, point two, point three. And this part here in the purple is just adding a nice transition. Points. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me make this more accurate. This purple part is just more transition as well. So you can visualize how it looks to have your intro well written. Hook, a nice little transition. Stance, a nice transition, three points. Background sentence is similar to stance. Yeah, yeah, similar. Not the same, but similar. The background sentence gives a bit more context of, of the essay while the stance tells you exactly what side you're on how many words should the intro be well you're writing 300 words roughly so if you're going to be writing five paragraphs that's what like 60 words per paragraph right right Anselm? yeah roughly All right, so that's the intro. What do you think about this intro, Anselm? Nice yeah, pretty well. Uh, yeah, nicely structured and everything. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, all right. So I'm going to show you a, a couple of essay intros, and I want you guys to analyze them and try to find each. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. What, what did I write here? Pardon me. Identify. Yeah? Let's identify each of the elements. So we're going to look for the hook, the stance, and if the three points are mentioned, we pick that out as well. This is another essay I did on stream. So let's take a look at it. Uh, this is the question. The number of road accidents will decrease if the age for obtaining a driver's license is increased to 20 years. Write an essay giving your views on this statement. So, and should, no, I, I don't want to tell you um, where the points start and stop. I'm going to see if you guys in the chat are able to point out the three elements where is the hook where is the stance where are the three points so you can just write hook and you write like the first word to the last word or just write about the whole thing if you type fast enough yeah and then Anselm and I will come in and actually you know make it right
All right, we have two answers so far. The hook is from Mario Kart to World. From Mario Kart to World. <laughs> really? 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 Everybody's saying from Mario Kart to World. And Slim, do you agree? I'm, I'm starting to question my own hook. <laughs> so maybe because uh, they see they saw the um the transitional word, however. Because uh, just not there, yeah, it confused me a bit though. But I can have a transition in my hook if I want a really fancy hook, right? <laughs> maybe confusing. You can't see anything? What, what do you mean you can't see anything? Um goddess queen. Oh, what a nice name. If anything looks blurry on stream, click the little gear icon and change the quality to 1080p. And then it should become crispy and nice. Yeah, it's looking pretty clear for me. Everybody is saying up until the world. Oh, man. What? What are you guys talking about? Seriously? No, Anselm, what do you think? I'm getting nervous now. <laughs> Where does my, my hook end? Um, I think it ends at devastating. Of course, that's where it ends. I mean, it's a long, fancy hook. So I guess you guys might be thinking, no, where the hook is that long? Yeah? No, no, it's this one, one doesn't sentence. have the... Uh... Yeah, this one doesn't have the um, the points, right? Right, right. So I guess that's the tricky yeah, part. Yeah. The hook is long and the three points aren't mentioned in the intro. Right. So Mario Kart, Need for Speed, Burnout, and Burnout are just a few of the captivating racing games that have gripped the attention of children and teens all over the world. However, real-world driving is not a game. And the consequences of a single lapsing judgment can be devastating. So this is what I use to get my reader, um, you know, alert. Like, what, what is this guy talking about? Gaming. Is this about gaming? But no, it's not about gaming because he's saying, you know, real life, real life driving is not, it's not gaming. So I guess all these kids playing games, they think they can just come on the road and start driving. If they think that they're going to see a game over screen when they crash. That's not how this works. Remember, I know this is the this is the um the question. The number of road accidents will decrease if the age for obtaining a driver's license is increased to 20 years. So based on this hook, do you think I agree or disagree? So basically increased from 18 to 20. If we move the driving age from 18 to 20 there will be fewer accidents. Do you think I agree? Some say agree, some say disagree. If I am saying these video games that kids play, Right? In these games, they are able to do anything they want to do. But in reality, driving is a very serious um, activity that has real consequences if mistakes are made. Am I supporting that there should be young drivers, 18 and 19? Or am I saying people should wait until they're older before they start driving? Of course. No, you guys are waking up. I am agreeing. I am saying, yeah, 18-year-olds are, 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 are too young to drive their kids. That's kind of what I'm indicating. You should play Mario Kart instead. Right? And now I get into my hook. While many concur with the current age for obtaining a driver's license, 18 years, I had to state this because the question didn't state it. So, you know, science and statistics reveal that increasing this age would result in a decrease in road accidents. So I, I have a long hook. 
and a thesis. So I didn't bother to add the three points because this is long enough for an intro. All right, take a look at this one. This is a student's essay that I also reviewed on stream. The question is, the use of social media is negatively affecting the lives of young people. Write an essay giving your views on this statement. Where do we see hook? Where do we see thesis? And if the three points are mentioned, where do we see them? And remember, increase the, uh, the quality. to 1080p if you're having trouble. All right, one person says, Alicia says the hook is who doesn't use social media these days. From who to this? From who doesn't to youth? Yeah. Who doesn't use social media these days? Social media has become the cornerstone of modern communication, especially amongst young people. Given its prevalence, I believe that it is important to ask whether it is at all harmful to our youth. I firmly believe that the social media is negatively... All right, so somebody says it goes on to youth, it goes on to days, it goes on to days. Wait till older. I firmly to people is a stance. Oh, there we go. Honestly, what do you think? Where do you think the hook ends? I believe it ends at uh, people. People, right? Who doesn't use social media these days? Nice rhetorical question. Um, getting us to, you know, reflect on the issue. Social media has become the cornerstone of modern communication, especially amongst young people. Given its prevalence, I believe that it is important to ask whether it is at all harmful to our youth. He hasn't stated the stance yet. This student has not um, yet um, said, I believe this. I'm on this side. They are just introducing the issue in a very impactful way. And note, the hook is kind of long. We have a rhetorical question. And then we have... A profound statement so like a double double whammy and all of this is the hook we'll go to the thesis this is where he plainly tells us what he believes and we have this big hint right i firmly believe that's a giveaway i firmly believe that social media is negatively impacting the lives of young people that's what he believes now we get into the points. There are many reasons that can be used to support my stance, including but not limited to. So this is like introducing the points. The detrimental effects of social media on the education of young people. That's point one. The plethora of mental disorders associated with social media use. That's point two. And the fact that social media exposes young people to unhealthy habits and idealizes them. 
yeah, the expression is a little off there. But that's point three. I will now expand on the aforementioned points. All right. So there's our hook. We have a rhetorical question and a nice statement. Gets us involved. Gets us interested in, in what's going to be discussed. Then we have the actual, I believe that ABC. This is what I think. That has to be clear. I can't skip that step. Then the student chose to outline the three points that um, will be discussed in the essay. Right? So, that's the intro. Done. Hook, stance, and optionally, three points. Right? Hook, stance, three points. No, the body, parag the body paragraphs two to four. So remember, we have five paragraphs. First paragraph is the intro. Then the next three paragraphs would be each, each point being developed. Each point gets its own paragraph. Yeah. In the body of the essay, make sure that you use a variety of persuasive techniques. Right? When you're discussing each point, make sure you use a variety of persuasive techniques. Right? Here are some common ones. The top three are very, very important. Very, very important. The top three. Evidence. You need evidence. You need some kind of appeal to emotion. Allow the reader to feel what you're saying. Right? Engage their minds and also their hearts, their conscience. Get an expert opinion somewhere in the essay. So this isn't just what you're saying. It's what experts are saying. Of course, this is going to be invented by you. Right? Other, other techniques you can use, the anecdote. An anecdote is basically a short story of somebody or a, a little mentioning an incident in which somebody experienced something or whatever. Figurative language using metaphors and analogies and all these nice things to explain points. Jargon, using sp specific language, like scientific language, social media terms, to kind of add some credibility. Let C say know that you have the vocabulary to fit the topic. Rhetorical question, you know that already. Anselm, what are, you, what are your favorite devices to use in, in the body of your essays? Uh, export opinion given this in um, most times or definitely with the um, quotation mm. and when given this you tend to um, give either from some an, a specific name of a person made up real or um, maybe an organization but uh, when given the names of organization I tend to um, try to make it as realistic as possible because it can be confusing at times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Anecdote is a good one too. You have yeah. a little story inside the uh, thing. Mm -hmm. Evidence. Don't overstate the uh, evidence too much. Don't understate either. Don't just say, well, we have evidence that suggests this. And don't give the evidence. Mm. Provide the evidence, but ensure you don't go over and beyond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the evidence should sound realistic, right? You don't want to say, you know, 99.9% .9 of teenagers who use Facebook die a horrible death. What? 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 That's not realistic at all. That doesn't make sense. So make sure that you, you, you kind of temper it down so it sounds like something that could be real yeah that's what you want to do and someone's asking about the anecdotes it's just like a mini story or like referencing to a story or a person or an event to help support your point yeah repetition for emphasis is, is another one yeah what what are some techniques that i might have missed here 
I think these are like the top seven in my book. But what are some other, and I want to hear from the, from the chat as well, what are some other devices that we could employ that could help us to really, you know, argue our points and you know, persuade persons? Anything else? Nothing else. All right, cool. So we'll, we'll, we'll stick with these, right? These are seven um, devices that you should really uh, learn to use, practice using them. Uh, you might develop a love for a couple of them. But the top three, make sure you have them in every essay. Make sure you have the, um, the top three. The others are, are kind of optional. Rhetorical question, that's good for hooks as well. Figurative language can be good for hooks. Alliteration. Simile. Ah, oh, similes can be useful. Alliteration is more of a poetry, I believe. Uh, you wouldn't really need alliteration in a persuasive or argumentative essay. But similes can be used to, to help, you know, with explanations and stuff. Pun. Oof. Pun, pun, pun. Would I use puns? I don't, I, I don't know if I would use puns, but if you can use them effectively. All right, so make sure you're using a variety of techniques. No, we're going to look at some body paragraphs, and your job right now is to find, to identify what techniques are used here. So this is the, the prompt we just looked at. Use of social media is negatively affecting the lives of young people. Um, let's, all right, let me see. Okay, we'll go paragraph by paragraph. So looking at the first paragraph, what devices can we find here? Immediately, what are we seeing? Uh, Come on, in the, in the chat, let me know. What devices do you see? What persuasive devices do you see so far? Somebody said rhetorical question. Yeah. That's a rhetorical question. Anything else? Nothing else so far? All right. To the first body paragraph. To begin with, um, social media has been proven to cause a decline in academic performance amongst the youth. A study published by the International Institute of Child Development, IICD, in 2021, show that the quick bursts of dopamine, the happiness chemical that social media provides, cause children from the ages of 12 to 17 to have a drastic 40% decrease in attention span and focus. The study also showed that this decrease in focus also translates to the classroom. Young people from, ages, from the ages of 13 to 15 who used social media regularly showed a 20% decrease in memorization of subject matter and a shocking 10% difference in examination results when compared to pupils who did not regularly use social media. What are we seeing here? Uh, somebody said hyperbole. 
Hyperbole. Oh, that's Bassanio. Welcome, Bassanio. Where's the hyperbole, Bassanio? Let, let, let me know. Symbolism. Where? If you're identifying, let me let me see where where it is. What statistics, Alicia? Everybody's saying statistics. So let me start highlighting some statistics. Uh, children ages 12 to 17 have a drastic 40% decrease in attention span and focus. Young people from ages 13 to 15 show a 20% decrease. Shocking 10% difference in exam results. So these are all statistics. Three different uses of statistics. Factual data. What else? One of uh, the devices not commonly used uh, in the jargon. Ooh. Uh, when we state uh, dopamine, the happiness chemical. Nice. We got the dopamine and we got the explanation of it. You know, the happiness chemical, the definition. So jargon. Using a, a word that's you know kind of specific to the to the field. Very good. What else? Anything else, Anslim? Could we say uh, export opinion as the exports are the uh, persons or the individuals mm. from the International Institute of Child Development? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have experts being mentioned. It's not really an opinion, right? It's kind of evidence brought forth by experts. But the mentioning of the experts is definitely a good device. So let's just call these experts. And what do you think about this particular reference of, of, of the experts, Anslim? What do you think about it? Yeah, it, uh, it would uh, make the reader more... Um, it would make this paragraph and the entire argument stronger as mm. this institution or this these experts are seen as trusted and this is uh this helps to support the entire entire argument mm -hmm. these persons we trust them they give us this they are renowned yeah yeah credibility so i'm not just telling you what i think i'm telling you what what the experts yeah. have found yeah and look at this look look at the name International Institute of Child Development. That's a wonderful name. That sounds real. Yeah. In 2021, telling us when the study happened. So that 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 adds a bit more credibility as well. Yeah. Somebody said explain jargon. Jargon is just using terminologies that are kind of more specific to the topic or the field. For example, dopamine isn't a regular everyday word. Right? It's a word that's kind of, you know, it's impressive because it's a, it's a scientific term. Let's put it that way. It's a scientific term. So words that have, um, words that aren't like regular average words, words that are really connected to a specific field, or words that only people who know about that topic would, 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 would relate to, those are... Um, jargons. For example, if I'm talking about chess, I might use words that the average person who doesn't play chess just wouldn't know. I might say en passant. I say, what? I don't know that. And that, that chess term, I might say castling. You have no idea. What, what, what is castling? 
people who, who know chess would know would know what castling is. You know, I might say checkmate, but you know, most persons might know checkmate even if they don't play chess. Yeah. So these are uh, chess jargons, chess terminologies that you know chess players would know. So dopamine is is kind of a scientific terminology that makes the essay a bit more impressive. All right. Um, Let's go a bit further down. Moreover, um, social media usage can be linked to many mental issues. Common examples of such are this, of such disorders are anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation, insomnia, anorexia, and many more. Do we see any devices here? Anything in this this little sentence? Evidence can be on um, supporting, giving the um, different types of mental disorders nice. or mental issues. Nice. So something as simple as listing examples is a kind of a type of, of evidence, and it can help to persuade. If you can list out some examples, it shows that you know what you're talking about. Yeah. In an interview from 2022, a teenage girl named Marjorie Thompson relayed her struggles with mental health as a result of overusing social media. She described her addiction as overwhelming and inescapable. She also described her battle with anorexia um, and is quoted as saying, I would always scroll on Instagram and see all the pretty models and I would feel less than. So I stopped eating to get skinnier, but it was never enough. Is social media really worth the mental anguish it inflicts on our young people? All right, what do we see here? We see a number of devices working together. Ah, somebody got it. We see an anecdote in an interview from 2022. A teenage girl named Marjorie Thomas relayed her struggles. Right? This is all an anecdote. But even within the anecdote, you have other devices. What other devices do we have within the anecdote itself? Anything else from you, Anselm? The chat can't find anything else. They are quotes, I believe. Nice. Direct quotes. These are quotes. Not expert opinion, but quotations are still a, a, a way to persuade and give some kind of evidence, right? Quotations. In this case, this is a form of evidence. I have evidence that social media does this because this person said that in an interview. It's a kind of evidence. Statistics, you know, that's not the only form of evidence. And what else? I think I can identify one more device. Should we they are rhetorical questions direct at the end, yes. Nice. Oh, there's another device. There's another one. Ah, there we have it. Easy to miss, but very, very effective. Appeal to emotion. Where do you see language that's appealing to, you know, tugging on, on the reader's heartstrings? In fact, this whole paragraph, especially at the end, the rhetorical question, right? So this whole thing, appeal to emotion. 
So it's not a case where you're going to try to use one, de one device per paragraph, right? You can mix and blend a number of devices to come up with very effective paragraphs, memorable paragraphs. All right, let's continue. Anselm, can, can you manage this handwriting? I don't know, you know. Pardon the, uh, you're sticking up a bit here. Now, I'm asking if, if you can manage to read this, this penmanship here. It looks almost as bad as mine. <laughs> I can if try. Can... All right, try. Let's see what happens. Finally, social media influences young people to partake in unhealthy practices and lifestyles. Let's talk about vaping. It has become the new epidemic facing schools across the world. This matter is not aided by the prevalence of vape culture on social media. An anonymous, what is that? Survey. So what is that word? Survey. An anonymous mm. survey done by the Pediatric Drug Use Administration, PDUA, showed that 70% of teens aged 13 to 18 have used a vape and that a shocking 50% of these of those respondents had vaped repeatedly. Had vaped repeatedly. Mm. Concerningly, about 80% of these of those who said they had vaped con cons constantly I think. Con Consistently, <laughs> consistently, hmm. vaped con consistently. I'd said they first heard of vaping on social media sites. This is not an isolated issue. Social media has allowed unhealthy. <clears throat> Mm, maybe a word is missing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Such as alcohol, alcoholism, smoking, and others to be platformed to young audiences. Vaping has, has been linked to a uh, uh, variety of variety issues. Of issues mm. such as lung cancer, and asthma. So I see if you can scroll a bit to the um, Oh, yeah. yeah. And asthma. But since it is a relatively new invention, there is not, there is not much that is currently known on it. <clears throat> on its affects effects effects should be effects this no no this okay from here this this, can, word uh, this time can only tell oh, time time can only tell the repercussions that that this will have on our young people. But if we want to avoid that outcome, we must push for the regulation of this. Such content. Content on social media sites. All right. Oh, rough paragraph to read. But there's a lot going on in terms of devices. What can we see here? What can we identify? Did 
This is a nice device, you know. What is it? It has become the epidemic facing schools across the world. Isn't this use of figurative language? I mean, vaping isn't literal, literally an, an epidemic, right? It's really comparing it to a disease that's taking over and having adverse effects. So figurative language. Very effective use. Figurative language. An anonymous survey done by the... What is all this now? From here. Uh, the exports, yeah. Yeah, we have... And I'm seeing in the chat as well, these types of evidence. Here we have some statistics, right? And we also have another mention of an organization, mention of the experts, what they're saying. Yeah. We have to, and down here we see some emotional appeal. And, you know, what we should do to avoid the outcome. Yeah. All right. Honestly, more pressure, please. Run, run the last paragraph for us. Let's see if we can see if there are any other devices here. To conclude, social media has, sh has been shown to be detrimental to the, to the lives of our youth. It hinders the educational development, mental well-being, and physical health of young people. As a result of this, I believe social media sites should be placed under restrictions or restrictions is canceled out there. Uh, more stringent I believe social media. I believe social media sites should be placed under more stringent restrictions of what can appear on the platforms. If we want to see changes on this issue, we must petition to our policymakers and our legislative representatives. Mm -hmm. So any new devices here in the conclusion? We'll soon get to how to write a good conclusion. But we're looking at devices for now. If we want to see it change, we should blah, blah, blah. Kind of appealing to, to your emotion, right? Because, of course, we're going to want to see it change from all this negativity. Yeah? All right. So, how many devices did you actually find in this essay? You guys are using one or two devices in a whole essay. You know? Take note. Rhetorical question. That's one. Expert opinion here, that's two. Jargon, three. Statistics, a couple times, four, five, six. Uh, examples here, seven. Quotation, eight. Appeal to emotion, nine. Metaphor, 10, 11, 12, about, about 15. About 15 devices in one essay, right? So... We can do it. We can do it. Uh, don't, don't worry, man. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll, I'll have you covered. I'll have you covered. Um, there, there are a few critiques I, I had on, uh, on this essay. For example, I think statistics are a bit overused and a few other things. But you can watch the video. The, the, some of the teachers and I actually assessed this essay on stream. So I might post a link to that later on if you want to see 
you know, how we reacted to it. But overall, it's a very good essay. That's why I pulled on it um, today. All right. Remember this road business. The number of road accidents will decrease if the age for obtaining blah, blah, blah. Let's see. What devices can we find? By the way, this is what the planning box looks like in the exam room. You brainstorm. You choose a side. You write and you kind of check off as you go along. Yeah. All right. Real quick. Speed mode, speed round. Let's find some persuasive techniques. We're almost at the end. Let's push, push through. What persuasive techniques can we find here? All right. Since you guys are are kind of slowing down, I'll. I'll highlight and you tell me what device, all right? The consequences of a single lapse in judgment can be devastating. What am I doing there? Hmm? Possibly I'm um, playing with the emotions. Nice. Emotional appeal. Ah, there we go. Jada has it as well. Yeah. The first and most obvious reason, it's a matter of simple mathematics, fewer drivers equals fewer accidents. This is actually another device, you know, one that we don't really talk about. What is this? It's appeal to something. But what am I appealing to? Not emotion, but something else. The first and most obvious reason for which raising the driving age would decrease road accidents is a matter of simple mathematics. Fewer drivers equals fewer accidents. Appeal to logic. When you make a very simple statement that is appealing to that kind of this common sense thing, like clearly if you have fewer drivers, they're going to have fewer accidents. That's really appealing to the sense of logic. You have the sense of emotion, the sense of logic. Yeah. Raising the driving age would to 20 would remove 18 and 19 year old drivers from the roads. While this change might seem insignificant, even for a small country like Jamaica, this amount would approximately would uh, that amounts to approximately 100,000 fewer potential drivers. There will be fewer drivers to make mistakes on the roads, as well as fewer vehicles to present opportunities for traffic complications. Do you see a device buried in here? What is this? Is it it's a form of statistics, man? Evidence. And then look at this. I'm trying to give uh, the poisons in the chat, but I'm not seeing anyone, you know. Yeah, they're falling asleep. Or I think maybe the, the chat is a, a little bit delayed. Even for a small country like Jamaica. What is this? Im imagery could be a persuasive technique, especially when that appeals to emotion. You know, bringing out visuals in, in the emotion you're trying to elicit. Uh, now I'm seeing the chat light up. Okay, I think they've woken up. Yeah, we have more evidence, and this is in the form of an example. Yeah. The second reason for increasing the age is a matter of commonly accepted scientific fact. Human beings mature as they age. While they are 
are some children that might be more mentally mature than some adults. In general, persons become more cautious and thoughtful as they age. Considering this, the age increase would lead to a lower percentage of reckless and boundary-pushing drivers, naturally leading to fewer accidents. All right. Um, let me skip through a couple of um, a couple other things with statistics here. All right. Uh, at the end, we have a bit of a appeal to emotion. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I won't go through the third um, essay here because I want us to push through, right? No. Another thing that you have to keep in mind when writing the body paragraphs, especially. Oh. So the first big thing to keep in mind would be make sure you're including those persuasive and argumentative devices. The second big thing to keep in mind Transitional words and phrases. You need these. You need these. These connect the ideas. They make it clear what the relationship between A and B is. Right? There are many different types of transitional words and phrases depending on what you want them to do. Some can emphasize, you know, kind of make a point sound stronger. Indeed, truly, of course, certainly, surely. Bringing emphasis to something. Some of them can show consequence. Something is, you know, causing something else. Therefore, as a result, hence, consequently, some transitional words and phrases can illustrate or show examples. For example, for instance, namely, you can add points and use transitions. And in addition to furthermore, moreover, showing contrast, opposites, however, nevertheless, similarity, similarly, likewise. So you want to make sure you're using a nice um, variety of transitions in your essay to get the points um, flowing smoothly. So final thing before we look at the conclusions and call it a day, let's look at these body paragraphs and try to identify some transitional words and phrases. We're kind of getting close to the end time, so I can't go too deeply on transitional words and phrases, but I have four or five videos on the channel that deal with that. So check that out if it's if it's something that you're, you're kind of weak on. All right, so let's look back on, on the CMSs. And this time we are looking for transitions. So really, really speedy, speedy. What are some transitions that we see here? Transitional words and sentences. Chat is empty. Hmm. Anything answering? So maybe um but not limited to including but not limited to. Ah yeah, 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 kinda. Especially the including, right? Introducing like some examples that we're gonna get into. Somebody said weather. Where's that weather? Oh. 
I'm not I'm not even seeing the weather. Third line. There's a special third line. Us well, this weather. is yeah, that's that isn't really linking any anything. Where's especially? Fourth line at the end. Fourth line at the end. Fourth, fourth. First line at the end. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Specifically, young people. Yeah. All right, cool. What else do we see down here? Transitions. To begin with, yeah, to begin with. The study also showed, you know, adding another piece of example. Someone said, moreover, where is, where is that moreover? Oh, yeah. All right. Let me know if I'm missing anything, guys. Yeah, but I, th I think we get the point. A few more. Let's see, and also, moreover. Yeah, 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 yeah. We get it. Yeah. And there are a couple more, I'm sure. To conclude is another one. Yeah. What about here? Any, any transitions? However, wild, uh, wild, nice, first and form, first and most. Wild change. In the chat, someone says, finally, I see however, as a result. Yeah. Considering this. Finally. As explained, kind of adding emphasis. All right. Yeah. And we won't look at the last passage. Or, or should we? Real quick, real quick. Answer him super fast. Year four. I'm just searching whatever I see. Yeah. While this. As something. They will blah, blah, blah. Showing that two things are happening simultaneously. Yeah. In fact, for emphasis, finally. Yeah. So, yeah, SS should have a, a couple of these. A couple of these. Right? Within paragraphs and between paragraphs. 
So basically, that's the introduction done, the body done, and your conclusion. What is your conclusion supposed to do? Your conclusion is supposed to do three things, potentially. One, you restate your stance or your thesis. Tell us again what you really believe. Two, summarize the points that your essay went into. And optionally, you can add a call to action or an appeal. This is what you can do about the issue. Let us do this about this issue. Why don't we do that? You should think that. It's like there's a, there's a final call to action, a final appeal you know, re uh, related to the issue. So finally, 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 we'll look at the conclusions to see what they do. All right, let's look at this, this guy's conclusion. Right. To conclude, social media has shown to be detrimental to the lives of your of of the youth so the thesis is restated well the thesis isn't quite restated yet until here uh, it hinders the educational development the points are being restated mental well-being and physical blah 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 restate the points as a result i believe Blah, 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 blah. The thesis is restated. And we have a call to action at the end. If we want to see change in this issue, we should petition our policymakers, blah, blah, blah. This is what we should do about it. Three pieces of the conclusion. Restate the points. Restate the, st restate the stance. Restate the points. Give us a call to action to send us home. Yeah. The call to action is optional. Look at this one. As explained, increasing the age for requiring a driver's license to 20 would lead to fewer blah, 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 fewer drivers competing to use the already congested motorways, as well as a driving population that is more mature and more experienced. So the three points are mentioned here. lead to that these factors would logically lead to a decline in road accidents i just restated the stance here while this change would initially disappoint teens who are excited to get behind the wheel this is a small price to pay for safer roadways not really a call to action but a similar kind of ending right so you don't have a sudden ending Look at this, this final conclusion. As high school prepares students for work and life, community service should be as compulsory as mathematics and English. That's my thesis statement rephrased. That's my thesis statement in a, in a different way. The personal and professional development fostered, the career and educational opportunity um, prospects gained, and the opportunity to make a positive impact on one's environment. These are the three points I would have discussed in the essay. Are only three of the numerous factors that support this decision. And I didn't have a call to action here, which is fine. All right. Hopefully, you, you, you kind of get a picture, uh, although I rushed through, a picture of what a conclusion can look like. Yeah. And... Sorry, but we're not going to really um, review anything. But I just want to let you know that you should have another five minutes left if you've been using your time wisely, efficiently, to review your essay. Take a screenshot of this because you're going to need to review your essay like this before you call it a day. Make sure your stance is clear. Right? Make sure your points are clearly stated and well explained, supported by evidence and strong arguments, good flow of the paragraphs, variety of persuasive techniques used, no contradictions, no errors. You double check your essay. And that's where I will leave it. Happy writing. Happy writing. Yeah.
Um, obviously, we didn't go into great detail with every piece of the journey, but hopefully the overview would have made it a bit clearer, you know, what the expectation is, what an essay is supposed to look like, what some techniques are that we can use, what some transitional phrases are that we can use, how you can plan your essay and think about points for and against. Yeah, as you can see with the scrolling, we covered quite a bit in about three hours. Yeah. And Slim, thank you so much for sticking it out to the end. Uh, just like everybody else. We still have 106 persons on stream, so most of you guys actually um, stuck it out and hopefully you benefited greatly. Hopefully something is clearer and you might, you know, be more confident writing essays. And Slim, any final words? The those viewing? Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me on. Great. I'll be on back with a few other of my colleagues, classmates. Listen, mate, yeah, this afternoon mm -hmm. as we review more. It was great being here. Definitely take these, take these um, suggestions that Sar give and that I give too. It'll help you greatly in the exam. It'll help me too because I never really liked this type of writing. But as I looked at the videos that Sora actually made, that's what got me into um, actually enjoying this type of writing. Then eventually I joined his classes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. So, yeah. Guys, get some rest and gear up because we're back at it this evening. This evening will be even bigger, you know. If you thought we if you, if you thought this was it we're just getting warm we're just we're just getting started because as Anselm said um a few more of my top students will be joining and we will be seeing some sample essays that they would have written so these are essays two of these essays I wrote the other one was from a, a, a past student that I reviewed um prior in, in, in a prior stream so in the evening in the evening session we're going to get to look at some essays that they wrote and we're going to get to pick them apart analyze them scrutinize try to find some errors to criticize yeah all that stuff we're going to be doing that kind of reviewing and we, we're going to start at 5 p.m jamaica time so for some of you it's going to be six for some of all right guys so take it easy and see you soon by the way by the way by the way before you leave um let me bring up the flyer again because i just want to remind you guys that you will be able to actually have your essays reviewed persons who came in late might have missed that uh, so let me just let me just show you that real quick we're crunching on to three hours now so we should we're wrapping up so on 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 this session here january 3 5 p.m We'll be doing essay reviews. If you want your essay to be reviewed by myself and my team, send a response. Send your best past paper essay to this email address. That's my email. AdamWebatCSECEnglish.com Do that and we'll be able to actually review your essay. On the stream, you can get some feedback from a number of persons and you'll be able to better understand where you where you need to improve and where you where you have it locked right so won't miss that opportunity send in your essays all right we're gonna call it a day did you guys get the email it's adam let me put it in the chat adam web at csec english.com 
It's in the chat, so I can just copy that and, and, and paste it somewhere. Right. Anyhow, thanks again for coming out. And Slim, thank you for soldering on for three hours. Um, I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, but ne the next session is probably going to be even a little bit longer because, you know, we're going to have a number of sessions to, to review. And you know how we do in the roasting sessions. We don't play around. We don't play around. So that's it. I'm gonna end the stream. Thank you um, for the viewers who came out on YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it easy. See you later. Bye, 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 bye.